welcome to my sewing room. We have such an interesting show for you today. We're going to talk all about circular wing needlework. And in a few minutes, my guest Lynette Wicker will share with you just how easy it is to do circular wing needlework. This quilt is a, an example of using wonderful machine embroidery. But do you notice the beautiful circles that surround the machine embroidery? That's part of the circular wing needlework. Since we're featuring women's clothes on this series, as well as lots of other things, we thought we would show you some examples of circular wing needlework using women's clothes. And of course, we also love to put machine embroidery on elegant women's clothes. Machine embroidery doesn't just have to be for children or for quilts. This very, very tailored linen suit is the perfect example of this. Using more wonderful machine techniques and beautiful wing needlework down the front of this suit. This suit is so beautiful. I think it, as, uh, we've got to have a skirt, which I didn't show you. But the jacket, wouldn't this be a wonderful uh, mother of the bride or mother of the groom? Let me just turn it around for you and show you how elegantly the jacket is finished in the back with its Madeira applique and the beautiful, beautiful uh, ecru machine embroidery and the ecru trim on this wonderful blue jacket. Let's don't forget table linens, one of my very favorite things to sew. This table, this beautiful table runner, and it could also be made into a placemat or napkins, has machine embroidery around the edges, but I especially want you to look at this delicate white on white circle machine uh, work, circular machine work with a wing needle. One more example of the circular machine work with a wing needle plus the use of machine embroidery is right here. Now then, come on over to the technique boards and let's begin to see how easy it is to do wing needle circular work on the sewing machine, of course. This is the most beautiful linen suit that I have ever seen. This suit has beautiful, beautiful uh, circular wing needlework on the sleeves. Just look at the way the half circles come all the way down the sleeves with beautiful decorative stitches right following the half circles, the wing needlework on the half circles. And let me just slip up this sleeve and show you this perfectly elegant pocket on this beautifully tailored suit. This is one of the jackets we have for the series, but oh, I'm not through with the surprises yet. This is the very tailored jacket, excuse me, blouse to go with the jacket. And you can see once again, this time we have Baby Daisy wing needle entredeau work done in half circles that follows the shape of the square and a beautiful peach and green machine embroidery. Let me pull the sleeves over and let you see the Baby Daisy wing needle entredeau work in half circles and actually use to hem the sleeve. Well, I'm not through yet. The skirt on this suit, once again, the pattern for our series, is perfectly beautiful. And coming down on the bottom of this wonderfully tailored skirt are some more decorative half circles done with wing needle entredeau work. Now, wing needle entredeau work can be done, of course, anywhere on any type of garment or home deck or baby clothes or women's clothes. First of all, you start with a wing needle. These are a couple of different sizes of wing needles. And then we'll show you some different stitches. And there are many stitches built into your sewing machine that do beautiful wing needlework from the bridging stitches over to the baby daisy and the entredeau and the pin stitches. This little gizmo, which uh, Lynette will show you in a few minutes how to use, is what makes it possible to do circular wing needlework. Now, over here shows an example of the, the uh, X marked in the middle, and she'll show you how to use the little circular maker, circle maker, to do wing needlework in a circle. Now on the skirt you saw that it was done uh, in half circles, which is really pretty too. So here is how you use the circular maker to make it circles and half circles. And then if you see over here, you can make the half circles off-centered and it makes a wonderful design. And then here is the design after you've made the off-centered half circles and put a little bit of machine embroidery in each one of them. Actually, these are tiny little machine embroideries, little hearts and little flowers, very delicate and very pretty. 
I'm so happy to have as my guest today my very dear friend Lynette Wicker, who is with the Foff Sewing Machine Company. Lynette, Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. I'm so happy to be here. And show us how you did those wonderful things on that gorgeous suit. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, we, uh, we've always used wing needle and, uh, for some beautiful techniques and added to our garments. And even in straight lines, it's gorgeous. And there's so many different stitches that we can use. Um, if, what you want to look for on your machine is stitches that have a repeated motion so that they go back in the same hole more than one time. Um, like these here, uh, you can see, I know your favorite Lazy Daisy stitch oh, right here <laughs> does that. But even if you don't have a lot of decorative stitches, you can um, look for the simpler stitches like your zigzag stitch that goes back in that hole over and over and over again. They're called tri-motion stitches. That's what you want to look for. And then when you set up your machine, you want to attach your um, circular guide. This is the way the one works on our machine and it's got little notches on it here so that I can actually um, measure and know that I'm going to get my circles all the same each time I put it in. Then I slide it into the back and tighten it down and all I need to do now is put my fabric underneath here and start sewing. So on this one I've drawn a line first with a fade away marker so that I can do my half circles um, like on the samples. So I'm just going to put this down here and I've selected one of my entredeau stitches and just let the machine do the work. And I don't want to do too much guiding. If I do the guiding it's going to affect it. The circular guide is doing what I want it to do. That so, is fascinating. Isn't it? It does oh beautiful work. You just let it sew. And there's just a little rubber piece in the bottom of there that right. holds it. The rubber stopper keeps this right where it is, and I'm just going to keep my finger on it because that keeps me from <laughs> doing anything else. In other words, hands off. That's right. <laughs> the machine knows what it wants to do. So we're going to do this half circle, and when it gets back to the line, all I need to do is stop and reposition. So we've come to our line and now I'm just going to slide it down and put the eraser uh, where the last one ended and okay. go right back. So it's very simple to do this. And when I've completed my circles I just go back and forth, back and forth from one side to the other to create the different sides. When it's totally complete we'll go back through and put the line down the center. We can let that continue and I'll show you the effect that you get if we had just done a complete one. But this is going to be what we have finished right here so that we have the two circles. And as I continue, I will just add one more circle on this side and one more circle on this side and we'll have everything done. And then go back and put the embroidery inside the circles. And that, that is absolutely beautiful. And uh, you know, uh, easy is my favorite word. That's right. It's very easy it's to make very that easy to make fabulous, everything elegant looking. That's right. <laughs> and elegant, oh, that suit is so fabulous. Well, thank you. Thank you, Lynette. Well, thank and you. now Lynette has a garment construction tip for you. Lynette, I can't wait to see the construction tip you have for our viewers. Well, thanks, Martha. We're going to do a little bit with blind hems okay. today. Hey. When you do a finish edge or the bottom of your garment, you have to finish it. So we're doing some blind hems here, and the very first thing you want to do is do something with that raw edge. I've surged mine on my serger, and then fold up the hem, the desired amount, and press. Pressing is a very important part of having a nice blind hem. After you've turned up the hem, you want to take the whole hem and turn it back underneath, and use pins to hold it in place and have the pins coming out the side like this so as you sew they're easy to take out. I've attached my blind hem foot already to the machine and it has a little bit of a guide on here so that I can put the folded edge of my fabric underneath here like this. But before I start sewing I want to make sure that I've loosened my tension. I have my tension at about two and a half for this particular piece. Sometimes I even happen to loosen my bottom tension, but do a test piece first to see. Then when you sew, you're just going to sew so that most of the stitching is actually in the air here and just catch one stitch. You have to remember you're catching a stitch on the bottom side also. So if you catch too many, what's going to happen is you're going to have a big hem that shows. So when you're all finished, 
you have a piece that looks like this. And you can barely see it. Now I've done it here in black thread so that you can actually see what's happening. But on your real piece, you're going to have it in the regular thread that matches your fabric. Lynette, thank you so very much for You're being welcome. here and for your wonderful techniques and that beautiful suit. Thank, thank you, you, Lynette. And next, we have a doll dress for you. I think you are going to love this beautiful blue Swiss Batiste doll dress. The technique that we're going to feature today is lace cathedral windows. And don't you just love this little princess dress with the lace cathedral windows, tiny, tiny, tiny ones coming down on the little sailor collar which comes to the waist? Then coming down on the dress, it is so pretty. Here's a row of decorative stitching done in blue on blue, uh, entre dos, and then here is the row of beautiful, beautiful cathedral lace windows. And you can notice there's a little decorative machine stitch in between each one of the cathedral windows. And then there's more entre dos that, that actually hems the dress and a beautiful, beautiful row of machine stitching. I think this is one of the most beautiful doll dresses that I have ever seen. Now making the lace cathedral windows is not really that hard and that's why I'm going to show you step by step. First of all, I cut two strips of bias. Uh, this is Swiss nylon or whatever fabric you use. This is two strips. Now after I cut the two strips the length I want my uh, uh, lace cathedral windows to be, I straight stitch using sort of a long stitch, basting stitch, all the way down, sewing those two strips together. Now this is really important, the next step. I do not do anything with the strips like that. I fold them, I fold them. See, here's where I sewed it together. Now I fold it the other way where when I pull it apart, I can see space in between there. In other words, I folded it back to where the two pieces, and by the way, of course, I have to press. Hold on just one minute. Then I just press it really, really well. You know that's important in all kinds of sewing. Now the next step is going to be to attach this piece of lace, but there's a little trick in that too. So let me get my next boards and show you how we're going to attach the lace. First of all, you do not sew the lace through the two layers of Swiss Batiste you to open up one side only of the Swiss Batiste. You put the lace, by the way, right down the middle of that pulled apart area. You fold, you sew it through one side only. And then I do the same thing to the other side. I do not sew it through the two layers of Swiss Batiste. I open it up, fold back the other piece, and sew it through one side only. Then I turn it over where this is the front of my dress. It doesn't look like much of a front yet, but it will. Then I'm going to make dots, oh, about two and a half inches apart. I make a little mark here, a mark here, a mark here, and all the way around your fabric. Next, I go back in and bar tack those marks here and here and all the way down, I bar tack. And then as you can see, the next step is simply to, oh, I have to pull out the basting stitches. And then I open it, come in and very carefully, I might add, press. Then I open the next little section just by pulling, um, kind of finger pressing it with my fingers. And I'll open this little section right here and I will press again. Now there's a little bit of a trick to sewing this. Let me share with you what we're going to do. Now after I've opened all of my little pieces, you can see that this is what it looks like. Beautiful lace cathedral windows. Now here is how you sew it. You start at the top and sew one, this is just a straight stitch, sew one side and then you cross over and sew this side. Then you cross over and sew this side cross over and sew this side. And ladies and gentlemen too, if there are gentlemen watching, that is how easy it is to do lace cathedral windows. And next we have hand embroidery for you. Mm -hmm. 
I'm so happy to have as my guest today my dear friend and business colleague, Kathy Neal. Kathy is one of the world's finest stitchers. And a, a real exciting thing, Kathy is also enrolled in the certificated course at the Royal School of Needlework in London. Kathy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's always fun to be here. In our continued discussion of early English embroideries, the Elizabethan and the Jacobean, uh, I wanted to bring a little special piece that I thought terribly interesting with me this morning. Um, Jill McFinney of New Zealand stitched this piece. This is a Tudor sweet bag. And the sweet bag was a very versatile little piece of needlework whimsy. Um, it was all, it usually had a handle of twisted cord just like this and tassel making and the decoration was an art all in itself that people prided themselves in being able to do something really special. A sweet bag had many functions. It was a gift wrap. If you had a small trinket or a gift to give someone, you could just slip it down inside the sweet bag. Um, the term sweet probably came from the fact that it was also used as a little potpourri bag or a sachet. Lavender was put inside and it was stored with linen or perhaps lingerie. It's, there have also been some sweet bags found with little pin cushions attached, much as this little um, pin cushion would be attached to the side. And from portraits and from pictures of the period, we know that perhaps women attached them to the belt of their skirts or um, dresses uh, to keep as a little pocket, just, just as we have pockets and jackets and skirts. But the sweet bag is a precious, precious uh, small article that if you wanted to just try a little bit of this Elizabethan embroidery that the Tudor sweet bag would be, would be a delightful place to start. Today I'd like to talk to you about a fascinating stitch. The first time I saw this stitch, I was amazed. I couldn't figure it out. And I asked and asked everyone that I knew if they could possibly help me to um, master this stitch. And this stitch is applique cord. And it really looks, Martha, like inserted entredeur into fabric. It doesn't have a beginning or an ending, really. But I wanted to show you the Elizabethans were fascinated with any sort of animal or creature from nature. And here we have um, the little snake or worm, it's somewhat abstract here, um, on the side of this scroll that we have here, the one in green. And it's done in the applique cord, and it's really nice because it, it actually looks like it is segmented. For applique cord, and I'll start here on my hoop, we need a cord and the cord lies right above the design line. And what we do, and I will put on my glasses for this because it is one of those that I need a little help with. We come up just under, just under the cord, which lies just above the design line. We actually bring the needle up on the design line and we tack that needle down, tack that cord down with the first stitch, just like this. And then we come just a stitch width away, and we begin to do the pin stitch. Um, the um, applique cord is just like a pin stitch. I go in it, A, come out at B, and I go over the cord to couch it. And now we have a new A and B becomes, I mean, A, our last A becomes our new B. And as you see, as we go along, we can actually couch this cord down. You can also do this in hand if you want to, but it's very important to hit the same hole. This is same hole stitching, much like shadow work or other needleworks. Now, when you get to the end and you're ready to um, come back, you simply turn the cord around and tack down the end. Just like so. And then using the very same holes that you used for the first pass, you come up in the same holes and this time you simply go in those same holes 
and then you couch the other side of the cord. And that way you look like you have, and I always use the same color um, working thread here that I use for the cord because I think it gives it that, that beautiful entredeau look and you have the two laddered sides. Kathy, what kind of floss did you use? What kind of in all of this uh, Elizabethan embroidery that we are studying, I am using a silk, a silk. And for this, I used, this particular silk has six strands. Okay. And I use um, five for the cord and then take, just pull out one. So my cord is five strands and that's exactly what I did here. I used five strands out of the um, bundle and couched, and couched and worked with just a single strand. Well, Kathy, once again, that this has been a fascinating, fascinating uh, stitch from our Elizabethan work that you're presenting for this series. And I want to thank you again for all of your effort and for coming. Thanks for having me, Martha. <laughs> and next, let's go to my attic. This is a really beautiful white dress that I have for you, probably around 1910, circa 1910. It is made of a beautiful uh, Swiss batiste that actually has embroideries on it. Uh, it this is not hand embroidery, but rather it's embroidered fabric. Look at the beautiful rows of, of white uh, French insertion and the tucks, always beautiful tucks, or nearly always we find beautiful tucks on these dresses. You know what amazed me? The sleeves were absolutely as pretty as the dresses. Can you see the beautiful little pieces of the fabric in there and the two uh, white insertions? We have a little uh, miter there. And then two pieces of insertion with a pretty little gathered ruffle of uh, French edging right below that. The waistline is very interesting on this dress. It has a little waistline piece, and on top of that are two pieces of the French insertion. The skirt is just absolutely masterful. Let me hold it up so you can see the bottom. How elegantly the laces have been shaped and stitched down and mitered, and then the three pieces at the very bottom, and then just a really pretty hem. Now let me show you the back of this dress, since many times the backs were just as beautiful as the fronts of the dress. And by the way, a lot of our ladies sewing today have gone back to the tradition of making the backs of the dresses just as elaborate as the front. Do you see how pretty it is? It really matches the front, except it has the little buttons that run down the back. Now, I guess the back of the skirt is a little more simple than the front, but this beautiful bodice is absolutely elegant. <clears throat> For my sewing from the heart for today, I have a letter from Alice Collins, and Alice writes, I belong to a senior citizens club in Gwinnett County, Georgia. We have two main charities, and there's one I would like to tell you about, the dolls that we make. The doll is sewn and stuffed. The doll's dress is sewn and placed on the doll. They are then taken to the children's hospitals and little red wagons. The doctors there use the dolls to show the patients where they will be uh, have their surgery. And if the child is small enough, he is taken to the operating room in the little red wagon. And of course, the doll is theirs to keep after the surgery. Last November, our Fun Time Club took 277 dolls to the hospital. And at each monthly meeting, we were made aware of our needs as to cutting, stuffing, and sewing for the whole year. Alice Collins. I also have another really sweet sewing from the heart from Carol Clothier. There is a group of mentally disabled men in our area that makes cradles for babies in need. Our quilt guild, Morning Star Quilt Guild in East Aurora, New York, has made over 250 crib quilts to be distributed with these cradles. The group that makes the cradles has come to our meeting to show us uh, one of their cradles and they're sanding in the finishing for their projects. And of course they always join us for snack time. The cradles are truly beautiful and these men are so proud and happy with their accomplishments helping babies who wouldn't have a cradle to be rocked to sleep. And we're quite happy to provide quilted warmth. Carol Clothier from East Aurora, New York. I just want to thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today, and I would like to invite you to come back next time. Mm -hmm.